Kia ora. Welcome to Sloan Ranger Studio. Thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to be looking at non-metallic metal copper. So last week we did bronze. There's a little bit of copper on this fetid blight drone around his face and some of the bits around him. So we're going to be looking at copper and it's not that complicated. There's only four paints or so you'll need. Let's get into it. So when it comes to painting non-metallic metal, we've already talked about how important contrast is, but another really important thing is the colour value. So when it comes to copper, our core colour is going to be that reddish pink, as opposed to the, the, the oranges and yellows that you might see in bronze or gold, or the dark greys and blues that you'd obviously see in steel and silver. So we're going to be using Doomball Brown as our main colour for this, and we'll be moving up through some white and a little bit of a glaze of orange, and then of course we're going to put some vertigree on it, of course. It's not that complicated, there's a few steps, but let's get into it. Alright, so after the last time we met, I have gone and added in the bronze on all of the other bronze areas on this fetid blight drone as we, you know, work our way through. What we're going to be focusing on today though is this little part here, this little uh, nozzle, nose part of the blow, the, the, the blow drone. So it's got this little curved Kind of cylinder and so that's a great opportunity to do some non-metallic metal because cylinders react with you know the light really really um in quite a basic way it's usually just kind of like a line that runs down the middle so it's a good way to show off the the value the values of color that we're going to be using in this one and so you can also see on my palette here i've mixed up the colors that i'm going to be using so i've got a bit of black a little bit of white we've got our doom ball doom ball in the middle here over on the over on the right we've got doom ball with black and over on the left we've got Doom Ball with white. So, you know, that's our kind of spectrum of colour to make our copper here. And then I've got a little bit of Scrag Brown to make our glaze. And a little bit of Sotec Green to do our verdigris. But the first thing we're going to do is base coat all of this area that we plan on making copper with our 50-50 Doom Ball and black. So, we base coat this whole area in that, which gives us our starting point. Great, so it's dry. The next step is going to be taking a little bit of our Doom Ball and a little bit of our 50-50 and making a bit of a halfway point. So I guess that kind of makes it 25% black or something. <laughs> Not a math scientist. Um, so take a little bit of this mix, this kind of, kind of one in between the Doom Ball and the black. Get a little bit of water, thin it down. And then all you're going to do start pushing this color up towards the middle here so you see I'm pushing it with the side of my brush up towards the center always pushing and always with the side of your brush and you, know, you might want to do this a couple of times because if it's thin it's going to be slightly transparent so you want to build up towards the center always always pushing see if you always pushing paint builds up builds up a bit of a gradient all right so I just zoomed in a little bit it's quite hard to see this little bit here but the next step is going to be just a little bit of our doom ball without any other kind of color interfering with it don't get scrag all over your finger like that so thin amount of doom ball and just the same thing pushing that doom ball up towards the center here you can start to see how that color starts to build up in intensity with every step we do and we keep the layers thin you might have to do this a couple of times but the more times you do this with thin coat the smoother that blend's going to be so you can feather the side and these transitions just a little bit with a take the excess off on your brush and just kind of feather these transitions but yeah you can start to see how that reddish hue is starting to build up now as we get closer towards the center of our of our light point so now that's dry we're going to get a little bit of Doom Ball and a little bit of white. Maybe, I don't know, maybe 20% of white is now in the mix. We're just going to be adding a little bit of uh, slightly off-white. I use Vallejo literally off-white for this, but you can use any old white or maybe even like a bone, like a Screaming Skull. Um, but 20% of that with our Doom Ball. Thin it down. And same thing. Just pushing it up towards the center here. We're covering a little bit less of a surface now. You know, with every step we come closer to the middle. 
building up a bit of a pink there. So do this a couple of times, because it's thin, and because we're starting to get very close to our bright point, do this a couple of times with a thin coat. And also make sure that you let it dry between coats. If you try and glaze up or, you know, try and blend any kind of colour while it's half dried and half wet, you're going to rip up the paint and you get these kind of uh, coffee stain looks where like you get a little ring around where it started drying but you've moved off all of the wet paint. So make sure it's dry between doing layers of this kind of technique. Okay, so that is dry. Next up, a little bit more white in our mix, kind of at this point in our kind of blend now. So maybe that's getting close to 50-50, Doom Ball and white. I'm going to keep it thin. I'll take a little bit of water that's on my palette, thin it down. Looking for, you know, that kind of, that kind of uh, opacity. So, same thing, getting very close to the center now. Just push this paint up and towards the center here. And it's starting to look quite coppery now, but it's not quite as bright as we want it, so let that dry, do that a couple of times, we'll come back for the next step. Okay, that's dry. Next up, more white, you guessed it. So, going into this kind of area of the spectrum now, we're getting very close to our highest point. Take off any excess, nice and thin. Same thing, just push it right up, and we get very close to the center now, and it's looking very pink. Maybe you start adding white into a mix, you'll notice it gets a bit chalky. It's just the nature of white paint, but there we are, we're starting to starting to see starting to see that metallic sheen come along to it. So you might want to do that a couple of times. Um, just let it dry in between coats, like I said. Okay, so we're at that last little point in our blend now. We're at we're at almost 100% white. You know, it's maybe 90% white and 10% Doom Ball. It's enough to make it a little bit pink, but it's very bright enough for us to get that impression that it's very very hot right up in that point so same thing pushing this paint up into into this space now helps that there's a rivet in the middle here it makes a nice little sort of terminal for our brush but push the paint up into this like brighter point here and while you're doing this if you ever do a step and you come to the end of it and think that that blend isn't as nice as you wanted it to be something I like to do is just go back a step so maybe somewhere in between here thin it down quite a bit very glaze like see it's it's almost almost nothing on my brush here and just kind of go over that transition maybe push it back down go back over it just kind of feather it up a little bit and this glaze will just help those transitions blend between the two you know it's just kind of like putting a putting a rug over an awful carpet almost and if you need to go back up and brighten up your your highlight again okay so that copper is looking very coppery it's got that pink and deep brown hue that we're looking for we're just going to brighten up at the very center of this highlight with a very thin little layer of white tiniest little bit on your brush very thin and just in the very top here I'm just gonna put a little bit of white just white on its own and very thin remember thin coats pushing the paint up to where we want that highlight to be Okay, so at the moment it's a little bit fleshy. It's uh, you know, it's just kind of pinks and browns. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a very thin coat of scrag brown, and you can see it's very thin. It's not barely making an impact on my skin here, but it's just enough to give this a tint. So just glaze over our mid tone with this scrag brown. We don't want to interfere with our bright highlights. We also don't want too much on our brush that it pulls up anywhere, so we just want to glaze over it, just an ever so slight orange, orangey brown tint. And that's just going to make it a little bit earthy, which is what we want for a metal. And 
And one of the last steps that we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of white on the very tip of our brush. And we're just going to come around and just give it a little bit of an edge highlight. And we're just very light, little, little lines. Show off this, show off this edge. I like to break it up a little bit, learning that from Ben Comics. Just makes it a little bit, a little bit more believable. So I do that around the edges of the cylinder, but also around these little holes in the holes in the metal here. Just come around, and I pick out these little holes in the side. Focusing on the uh, the bottom bottom edge, the edge that will pick up the light a lot more. You also want to pick out the rivets, make them look like they've got a shiny, shiny edge to them. So there's just a couple. All right, so there's our copper. Last thing to do is to thin down our Sotec green, very thin, very thin, kind of like what we're doing with the with the Scrag Brown. See, it's it's not very not very intense at all. Maybe a little bit more intense than that. Maybe a bit more like that. Take the tiniest little bit on your brush and just around those rivets, just glaze in some of this Sotec green. So, this just looks like there's a little bit of verdigris building up. Of course, being a very green blue, it's going to contrast and complement very nicely these uh, pinks and oranges we've been working on. Maybe put some blue into these holes. The water's been pulling up in there. You've kind of got to think like water when it comes to doing verdigris and rust and all that. Like, where would the water go? If I was water, where would I go? And just the tiniest little hint around these ones on the top here. Okay, I'm happy with that copper. I think it complements all of our blue hues quite nicely. Let me know what you think in the comments, and if you like this tutorial, definitely like and subscribe. I'm going to be doing a few more non-metallic tutorials, but of course, there's going to be a hell of a lot of other tutorials going on as well. So let me know. Let me know what works and what you like. All that kind of feedback. It's all appreciated. I want to know how to improve my channel, of course. But I hope you like it. Good luck on your own non-metallic ventures. And if you're painting a featured blight drone along with me, hope that's going well too. Thanks again. I'll see you next time. Bye.